Uh, hello, uh, Jim Howard here in Fort Worth, Texas. Today's date, it is January 5th of 2019. It's uh, 6 a.m. This is my breakfast. Popcorn. Microwave popcorn. Um, I think this is going to be fast. I wanted to mention a couple of things. Uh, I added a camera. So I now have, this is the C930, I think, USB, and this is the one I just added. It's a, I don't know who, who makes it. Uh, it looks exactly like a, uh, well, not 100%, it looks 95%, like a Microsoft camera or not a Microsoft, a uh, Logitech camera. I just hooked it up a couple minutes ago. So it is nice that you can switch. It used to be you couldn't do that, have one camera hooked up, and that was all. You couldn't hook another camera up. That was a long time ago, though. So Logitech uh, C930, I think, E, or something like that. This one over here that's just called, I think, Live Cam or something. And then the uh, Logitech, let's go to that. Whoops, no, that's uh, not it. The Brio, and that's it. So, uh, the government shutdown is still going. The Democrats have now taken control of the House of Representatives. Trump is saying that uh, the him shutting down the government uh, may last months more or maybe even a year or longer. I think he said it might even last to the 2020 election. Oh my God. Um, TSA, that's the transportation See, hundreds of TSA security screeners at the airport are calling in sick. They're having to work and not being paid. Um, that's sort of why I wanted to uh, mention something. I worked all my life. I was never without a job. And I sometimes work two jobs. I even worked for the government for a while. I had a lot of different jobs. Is this rude to eat in front of you? Uh, the shutdown... Well, the TSA employees and anybody else that's, um, you know, calling it sick or whatever they're, you know, whatever they're doing. Some of those people, you know, may not have the money to put gas in their car to drive to work. Uh, some of them, if they're in... I think almost 900,000 workers are either having to work without pay uh, or they're, they've been sent home not to work, but they're not getting any money. Uh, Trump doesn't understand that. He can't comprehend that. We probably should never elect a president who cannot comprehend, cannot understand the, you know, there are requirements in the Constitution, very few, you know, uh, natural born citizen and I think 35 years of age or something, that's about it. There ought to be other things, you know, 
you should have to have been an actual working person to hold the office of president. You should uh, have to release your tax. There should be certain, so we don't have something like this happen. Uh, Donald Trump just doesn't comprehend. You know, these people, they're not getting money. And especially the ones, well, not it doesn't matter, but the ones that are having to go to work, uh, they may not have money to put gas in their car. They may not have money to buy a transit pass to uh, ride the rail or a bus or whatever. I'm assuming there that like they're Washington, that a lot of them are in the Washington, D.C., Virginia, Maryland area or whatever. And we just can't comprehend, you know. Um, a lot of these people, you know, desperately need money coming in. Uh, some of them may have already been working as, like, say, an Uber driver or a Lyft driver or something else uh, to supplement their income. So now maybe what they're doing is going out and doing that because you get your money. Well, I, I watched a bunch of videos for there for a while. I was watching a lot on Uber. And I think they get their money goes in the account at the end of the day or something or other. So not like they have to wait two weeks or something. So there may be people who are just doing that. That's going to be difficult, though, especially where there are a lot of federal workers because there'll be fewer people going to, you know, using Lyft or... It's just a... It's just... It should not happen. The government should fund... The government should pay their employees. The, the government should pay their employees well with a good pension plan. And you don't want a turnover of employees unnecessarily. Oh, the government, oh, our system is just so... We need grown-ups now. I just happened to mention this the other day. I, I was talking about all the jobs I had. Um, well, I did get hired in by the post office. Well, I took the post office exam, and I passed it and got on the waiting list. And then they, the federal government back then, which I think was like in the 60s maybe, uh, put a freeze on hiring of federal employees. Um, and that was there for a year or two. Then they took it off and I happened to get a notice all of a sudden, you know. I was on a construction job uh, in Convent, Louisiana. And I came home, and I had a box of mail there for me. And because uh, I've been down there at the tech building a Texaco refinery, and I started going through all my my mail, and this thing from the post office says report Monday morning for your you know. And then same with federal protective officer. I took the exam for that. I passed it. They immediately put a freeze on. They were doing that because there was. Uh, a push from, it was sort of really Democrats and Republicans because they, they felt that it, uh, you know, was what they wanted to be able to say to uh, to voters, you know. Oh, we're cutting back on size of government and doing all this kind of crap, and so they put a freeze on the hiring of federal protective officers, and. Not only that, the reason that they hired the federal, started the Federal Protective Service was there was bombings at federal courthouses and places like that uh, from right-wing uh, terrorists here in the United States. And uh, maybe some left-wing people back then. That's how far back it was. But... Uh, so anyway, eventually, well, I did get contacted once. They took the freeze off or something or other, and I got con I mentioned this the other day. They contacted me and said, uh, there's an, one opening at uh, Des Moines, Iowa. I was in Kansas City, Missouri. Uh, do you want it? And so I talked to my wife at the time, Darlene. We had t two kids or four kids. I can't remember. So we have four now, but. We discussed it. She said, "Okay, let's let's go for it." So I told them yes. What they do is they submitted three names up there for the one position, and then the 
supervisor up there or whatever picked one. I didn't get picked. And then they put a freeze back on federal hiring. And so a year or so later, I told them, take them. I couldn't, I couldn't afford it, you know. To, we had bought a house and everything, and so take my name off the uh, registry. So that was the kind of thing that was going on then. Uh, but this, you know, this has to, this has to stop. There has to be some adults here. Really, it's the Republicans' fault. The Republicans, you know, the right wing voted Trump into office. He is, in my opinion, disastrous. Uh, you know, all the Republicans have to do is, you know, admit to themselves, oh, man, we messed up. So, you know, in this case, what they could do is the Democrats have already passed, that just came in, you know, the they've already passed uh, legislation yesterday to fund, I think, six of the seven uh, branches of government that don't have money. And... Uh, Trump has indicated that he will, you know, veto it or that he won't sign it. If he doesn't sign it, that's a pocket veto or whatever. All the Republicans have to do is just, you know, I think they've tried to reason with him. All the Republicans in Congress have to do is just vote with the Democrats, override his veto. That's the end. The government is funded back. Uh, and... That would be humiliating to, you know, Trump, and would make him, well, you can't, you can't educate him. He doesn't want to be educated, and he isn't capable of being educated. But what happens is you've, you've got Congress people that are elected. They need to stand up, be adult, and do the right thing. Back when uh, Obama was elected, the Republicans... Uh, right away, in the very beginning, said that uh, they were not going to cooperate at all. They um, were going to make sure that for the you know for that first four years, that that President Obama had no success, no failures, and that his term would be a uh, a total failure. Voters, even re even the Republican voters, the voters who voted for those Congress, I mean, that's outrageous, what they were saying. And what happened was Obama was, you know, they were going to make sure that he was not reelected. Well, he was reelected. And the Republicans continued it for another four years. We're not going to give him any successes at all. We're going to make sure that his presidency is the worst presidency because nothing gets accomplished, nothing gets done. And that's what the Republicans did for eight years. But when that first happened, when they first announced that they were going to make, attempt to make the presidency a failure, the next time there was election, every Republican should have been voted out of office. That would have sent a message after that, the Republicans and Democrats would be, you know, saying, okay, uh, we have to, answer, you know, act responsibly. We've got to be, you know, adults. We have to do what's... Because what the Republicans were saying was, you know, remove Obama's name and put in United States of America. The Republicans were saying, we're going to do everything we can for the next four years to make sure the United States of America is a total failure. We're going to do everything we can to make sure that the United States of America has no successful legislation, no improvements, uh, no... That's what they were saying, and that should... If they had been punished for that, and their way to do it was by the, you know, ballot... Uh, the same with with uh, Clinton. Uh, 
when the Republicans decided they wanted to do a coup. Coup? That's not it, is it? When they decided that they wanted to uh, reverse the election, uh, they got to, a group got together and decided we have to find some way to get uh, President Clinton to say something under oath that's not true. They actually got together, in you know, a small group, got together to do that. And uh, Hillary Clinton, I can remember, Back then, uh, someplace, I don't know if it was she was on Oprah or where she was, maybe it was a news conference or whatever, she said that there was a uh, right-wing, extreme right-wing group that was uh, doing everything they were going to do everything they could to uh, have the, you know, remove the president. Uh, and uh, she was attacked, you know, by, of course, by the right-wing and maybe even by uh, mainstream media saying, oh, you know, no, that's not, there's no little group that's, you know, trying to uh, uh, remove the president and, and pull a, you know, uh, something off like that. And it turns out, you know, we found out later that there was a group of actual people, a small number that met and decided we just have to get, you know, President Clinton under oath and get him to say one thing, you know, that we can uh, charge him with uh, perjury or whatever, and that's it. And they actually did it. And, uh, you know, President Clinton, a ro a, you know, a road scholar, I know it's a very, very smart man, and man, he walked right into that, and he gave them exactly, of course, I'm not married now, I'm divorced. I was married for 12 years, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't have wanted to, to, if I were asked, you know, well, I never cheated on my wife ever. But, I mean, if I was cheating on my wife, <laughs> and you, you'd ask me, you know, well, you know, under oath here, did you ever cheat on your wife? And, of course, she wasn't sitting over, you know, but I'd be, uh, no, uh, you know. Actually, I don't know if I would or not, because I would know. And, uh. I think President Clinton was a lawyer also. But anyway, the the Republicans who tried to remove, well, they did impeach him. The House voted to impeach him. And the Senate did not remove him from office. But every one of those House members especially, well, sure they should do it to the Republicans also or to the senators also, uh, if they had been not real, if, if there would been, and I blogged about that at the time when that happened in my blog, I said, and I listed the names of all of them. I said, they should never be, you know, the voters should never elect them to anything, no office at all, because if you don't do this, if there is no retribution, if there's no penalties, this is going to go on, and you'll have every, you know, every president. They're going to be for no cause at all, or very small cause. They'll be, well, let's let's impeach him. And it, if then, if the voters, it would have it would have to have been the Republican voters. If if those people, if their careers were over as soon as they were up for election, if their careers were over. Democrats, Republicans, ever they wouldn't be bringing up impeachment. Now, in this case, actually, this is a case where impeachment does need to be brought up and probably acted upon. But they wouldn't be wouldn't have brought it up for Bush Jr. Uh, wouldn't have brought it up for Obama uh, or. Uh, because there'd be some, there needs to be what we need. It's not, of course, it's not going to happen because they. Uh, that's right. Let's see. Uh, I don't even know who, if, if this is a Democrat or Republican, he's proposing eliminating the Electoral College. 
That's not going to happen because I think it's I've been, for a long time I've talked about that and I blogged about that years and years ago. But it's not going to happen because Republicans won two times recently uh, on electoral votes, not popular votes. Just take the last election. Hillary Clinton got more votes than Donald Trump did. But the Electoral College, you know, put him into office, which is the way the system is supposed to work. I think it's well, before all this came up, I thought that the, we should look at eliminating the Electoral College. But it's not going to happen because it would look now like if the Democrats are for it, which they, only, they won't even be for it, it would look like, well, the Democrats are just trying to keep the Republicans from getting elected. So it's not going to happen. But it probably needs, we probably need to re- um, you know, look at that and come up with, uh, you know, come up with something because it's a mess. Uh, I don't even know. Well, I'm going to not, I'm going to skip that. Um, oh my God, Trump praises Soviet Union for its invasion of Afghanistan, which, you know, the United States and the world condemned the Soviet Union back then, and we supplied arms to the uh, people that were fighting the, uh, the Russians in Afghanistan. Russian, well, you know, the USSR at that time. They had to pull out, and that became like their Vietnam Oh. Five teenage girls dying in an escape room blaze. When I first saw that headline, I thought, uh, you know, somebody had built a safe room in their home and that these girls went in there and then couldn't get out. But it has to do with, I think, was it Romania or can't remember where, Bulgaria or someplace. There's some type of a game situation. I don't know if it exists in the United States. Some type of rooms are set up like a game situation. You go in, the doors are locked or whatever, or you don't know maybe where the doors are or something. You go in and you have to, using clues, uh, get your way out of the thing. And I guess I ought to see what country it's in. And so, oh, you know, five, t 50, I think, uh, Poland, five 15-year-old girls uh, who had a horrible way to die and how... how uh, but anyway, it sounds like the Polish government says they're going to do safety, you know, fire inspections of these places. There's going to have to be somebody, stay, you know, all that type of stuff, but... Oh, how, how terrible. Some things are... <laughs> I did watch this, and uh, a man, a woman, I guess some guy tried to kidnap a woman or something. Oh, let me... man tried to kidnap a woman or something. We don't know. I don't think we know the details exactly, whether it's domestic dispute or whatever. And she got away from him and ran into a karate, you know, storefront where they have teach, and it was about 9 o'clock at night, and uh, there were still a few little kids there to be picked up, maybe a few adults, and the uh, lady told the uh, martial arts teacher there in the dojo, did I pronounce that right? Um that somebody was trying to kid she was, you know, and so he went over to the door and told the guy, hey, you can't come in here, you need to leave or whatever. <laughs> and, yeah, you know where this is going, that's what the headline on this thing says. And the, uh, and, well, of course they said that uh, 
Well, they showed a picture of the uh, martial arts teacher, a black guy, and he was a big guy. But apparently, the guy that was trying to get in, I don't know what color, maybe it doesn't matter. Did I just indicate I'm racist or I don't know? I'm not, by the way. But uh, apparently, the guy trying to get in was much bigger. But uh, the martial arts uh, instructor uh, put some did some moves on him, and the uh, ambulance had to show up and haul this guy, held that guy away. The police showed up also, of course. Actually, I, the martial arts instructor must not have, well, he had to go by ambulance. <laughs> but a, the police also were charged that guy with uh, resisting arrest, so he must have been fighting the police also. But there's a lot of YouTube videos on situations like that. Uh awful lot of them are security camera things. But God, I love them. Uh, I've even seen some like at school. Remember one that wasn't the greatest video, you know, the, the quality wasn't. But there's a nerdy kid or whatever and uh, a big bully, a kid, comes over, looks like grade school, comes over to him and starts doing stuff and the kid is, you know, like, don't hurt me. Of course, there was no audio, but you know, don't hurt me, I don't want to, you know, whatever. And then he, the, the little kid, knocked the crap out of this big bully, and he's laying on the ground there, and the, the little nerdy kid walked to his class, I guess. I love those kind of videos. Um, let's see here. Uh, the Democratic House member coming in, a female, uh, was asked a question about Donald Trump or whatever, and she said, impeach the motherfucker. You know, really, she shouldn't have done that. And, of course, she's being condemned by Democrats and Republicans. I agree he should be impeached. And I agree about some other stuff she said about him. But he is, you know, even if you don't respect the man, we should try to respect the office that he holds. You know, it should be Mr. President, and and she really shouldn't. And it's counterproductive. That's just, all that does is, you know, uh, make those who are supporters of his more determined, you know. So, but anyway... Uh, Remember, we had uh, back at the state of when uh, Obama was president, State of the Union address, where the House members and the Senate members and the Supreme Court and uh, other, you know, people from government all show up, and the president delivers. It's in the Constitution that's, but it's in the Constitution that the president will and President. You know, George Washington, the first president, you know, it was up to him to decide a lot of this stuff. Because it, you know, it just said, we'll report. And uh, and I'm not sure in the beginning even that it was, I think it might have been something that was written as in over. But anyway, uh, a Republican, the president is talking, and a re Republican uh, member of Congress yelled out, you a lie. And that had never had never happened before, and I think the Republicans, if I remember correctly, what well, of course Fox News and right wing, you know, oh they loved him, and uh, whatever. But actually, the House members, I think they passed a condemnation of him for that, but he was able to raise tons of money. He immediately used that sending out things, you know, to uh, Republicans to hey, donate. And he, he made a lot of, got a lot of money and, and donations. But uh, we, we need to try to work together. We need to try to maintain some, or else we're going to turn into, I'm sorry if this offends somebody, we're going to turn into a banana republic. Uh, 
going to turn into some of these places you've seen. I'm not sure if I'm miss, you know, Turkey Parliament. I think even Israel. Uh, people hitting each, you know, the you know their uh, legislators hitting each other and throwing chairs and and you see that from time to time. We don't want that to be our nation. Uh, from weddings to beer, surprising impact of the shutdown. Yeah, you know, things are coming up that I really didn't think about. I didn't think about the, somebody mentioned that on CNN or someplace that it's, there are some people who are not going to be reimbursed, you know, like in federal buildings, there's, well, maybe food trucks that are outside and they depend on employees going out to get snacks. There's in federal buildings, in the lobbies, there's a lot of times there's uh, stands that sell stuff. Uh, it, the impact of this is uh, just going to be absolutely dreadful for a lot of people. And there's a lot of people who will not, you know, get paid. You know, they, they're going to be out. You know, the government employees were, are going to get reimbursed. But if you're an, a government employee and you can't pay your rent or... Uh, here, I live in an apartment complex in Fort Worth, Texas. If I were to be, I never have been, but if I were late with the rent, the rent is due on the third of the month. If I were late for every day that I was late, they charge $50. So, I, you know, I'm sure these are situations in... Uh, other places may be worse, or you know, and plus, uh, some people are going to be. And then too, I was telling somebody, I said, well, you know, what the banks need to do, and other people, you know, they know the federal employees are going. We know the strike is going to end, uh, and we know that federal employees are going to be paid. So, you know. Or could banks just, because banks rip us off. I happen to use Wells Fargo Bank. They're a criminal em enterprise. If you're not in the United States, but if you're in the United States and if you watch news, uh, they're a criminal enterprise. I use them because they're half a block down the street. I don't own a car. I'm not in the best of health anymore. I'm lucky <sighs> if I can walk half a block down the street and back. But, uh, so I use that bank. But, so I, and like, it it came up in the past. I think the Democrats were trying to get banks to charge less when you use a card to take money out of an ATM or something like that. And it came out that, uh, At that cost, when you put your card in there and they charge you five dollars or something, now if you use your card at a one of the, like if I go down the street and use my card, my uh, Wells Fargo card, it doesn't. Co that's my bank. It doesn't. Co I don't, they don't charge for using the card to take money out or whatever. But if you're using it, but anyway, it's you know. Uh, it cost them like two cents, but yet they charge sometimes five dollars. Probably the minimum they charge is like two dollars or something uh, to do that, and it's only costing them two cents. And I don't think that we could, uh, you know, the banking industry and the financial industry and the Republicans, you know, fought that, you know. Now, and the people who wanted it changed. They weren't saying, well, the bank should only charge you two cents. You know, they were saying something reasonable, you know, 50 cents, a quarter. But no, you couldn't get that passed. Some Democrat that just came in, I believe, said that, uh, what was it? 
rich people should be charged 70 percent tax increase to pay for I forget what you know they're two percent got this tax cut that went through massive amounts of money and then you've had Trump and the Republicans is Trump a few weeks ago or a few months ago was saying well we can't afford this can't afford that because uh, the government you know doesn't have enough money coming in well they would have had enough money if they hadn't have given the major major tax cut to 2% of the people here in the United States you know Trump wants 5.6 billion dollars now for the border wall why not just cut back that massive which was trillions and trillions of dollars not billions of dollars trillions and trillions of dollars were given to the wealthy why don't uh, why doesn't Trump just uh, cut take one tree and back or he wants 5.6 billion change the, ca the uh, code and uh, take 25 billion you know back from that tax you know cut that he gave to the uh, to the wealthy anyway the main thing I wanted to say was my god these federal employees Remember, uh, it's just somebody said, I'm, I'm here in Texas, I'm not sure if it was in the Texas or whatever, but uh, the people who get food stamps, right now there's enough funding. See, because the food stamp, actually it's not food stamp program anymore, it's called something else, but it's, it's what used to be the food stamp program. That... Um, The federal government, you know, Congress decides and whatever, but then the money is sent to the states, and so there's offices in the states or whatever that give out the. So something was said on the news or someplace, and I was thinking, well, no, they they won't be shut down. People will stop won't are not going to stop getting their food stamps because the federal government sends money to the state and then the state employees, government employees, are the ones who decide who's eligible and all that. And the, each state can decide a little bit how they, I guess, how they're going to do it. There are some federal guidelines, I'm sure, but, you know, it's minimal. And then the states can decide how they're going to do it. Well, then uh, there was just recently something that it, it never occurred to me that the federal, I thought the federal government would send down to the state of, say, Texas, the money for the year. But I think that they're maybe indicating that the federal government only sends it down per month or something. And those employees and our federal government are not there to, and it's, and it's um, then also somebody mentioned section whatever it's called there's uh, government help for people who are really poor with rent and they can get uh, part of their rent paid if they meet certain conditions or whatever section whatever And there's there's problems, maybe problems with that because I'm th I'm thinking in my mind, well, the, the federal government would send this money down once a year. You know, the budget is passed, and then they send the money. It it may be that they don't do that, that every month, the. Uh, I was working at Trinity Lutheran Hospital back around 1970s, a 500 bed hospital, maybe it was 350 bed hospital. I enjoyed working there, really, well, until I got fired. Actually, I wanted to get fired. Um, 
I got fired because I was opposing racism in the <laughs> fought and uh, got fired for that reason, actually. Um, but anyway, uh, the hospital put a thing out. There, was, I'm not sure if that was uh, why it was. I can't remember now if there was a shutdown for a short period of time or if just something came up with passing of legislative bills or something. But hospitals here in the United States get uh, 60 or 70 percent of their money that comes into the hospital comes in because of Medicare or Medicaid. It's a very high, I forget what it, they, in the hospital, for some reason the legislation wasn't passed or hasn't been passed yet or for some reason Medicare, Medicaid or whatever uh, indicated that they would be late sending the money to the hospital, to all the hospitals in the United States. And the hospital I was working at, Trinity Lutheran Hospital, I put a thing out saying, you know, we, all our money just about comes from this, and we, we're not going to have enough money. It looks like we will not have enough money to make the payroll, you know, next week or whatever. We got paid every two weeks. We're not going to have the money to be able to pay that, pay you. We will pay you when we get the money but we're not going to have the money to pay you next, you know, week. And uh, then it turned out then the hospital sent a uh, memo out to everybody saying that they were going to take a short-term loan from their bank and uh, make, meet the payroll. And then I think they didn't actually have to do that. I think the government right away kicked in and because all across the nation, it was the same situation. It wasn't just Trinity Lutheran Hospital. It was every hospital. Gets, that's another reason why the, the federal government should, on prescription costs and all this type of stuff, uh, you know, put some, you know, put some pressure on pharmaceutical manufacturers and whatever. I mean, it, because the government, the employee, or the citizens, you know, they were, were the ones who were paying the taxes or whatever. And if, if you or if you have insurance and you go to the hospital and you're paying and all that kind of stuff, but the pharmaceutical companies just rip us off major. But, you know, we should be able to have, if we had a functioning government and a functioning Congress, you know, we should be able to say, Okay, um, let's say uh, ABC Pharmaceutical Company, you made uh, $15 billion off of Tylenol or aspirin or <clears throat> something or other. Uh, you're going to pay uh, X amount of tax, which amounts maybe to $5 billion or something, you know. And uh, that's going to be used to supplement Social Security, or not Social Security, Medicare or Medicaid or whatever, you know, just... Now, if some pharmaceutical, comp pharmaceutical company isn't making, of course they all are, if they're not making profits, big profits, then leave them alone or give them a little bit of money to, hey, can you come up with a cure for cancer or, you know, Something. Anyway, this is longer than I wanted to talk about it. Oh, I always let you know. I have still have my two monitors up here. I moved my Roku TV over here. This on the... Well, you can't see it with that camera. Um, oh, I forgot how to change cameras, I tell you. Okay, that's it. Not a very good... Uh, this is a Roku TV over there. Um, and I, I sort of accidentally, man, I'm dumb. I forgot that I had signed up, I guess, when YouTube TV first came out, that I'd signed up for a 30-day free trial. So uh, the other day I went over and uh, thought, I'm going to try it out, see what it's like. So I went and then 
I guess, stupidity on my part. But anyway, it showed, you know, $40 or whatever charge. And I thought, well, no, they're not actually charging me that. That's going to be, you know, if, if I want to continue or whatever. They just want the... Anyway, that ended up charging me $40, $42 or whatever. So I've got it for uh, till the end of this month. So uh, you can't see it. Oh, there you're seeing a little bit of it. It's actually not bad, except it's $42. And I cut the cable. I mean, you know, I did away with cable because of... But uh, anyway, I, I, I already canceled it. I mean, well, I've still got it. But I, I immediately, as soon as I, as soon as I saw they actually billed me for it, I went and said, "End the thing." And, and uh, YouTube and some of you know, like Netflix and Amazon, those you just go there and you click. I and so I've I'm, I've got this till the uh, like the rest of the month. So uh, let me go back. Here, so YouTube TV they have at the top there library home and and live, and live is the depending on your area you know. So there's uh, local news Fox Four, local news NBC, local news ABC, local news CBS. I don't know what channel 21 is. It's something local. TBF, TNT. A lot of sports. CNN Sports. Oh, just a whole bunch of sports. If you're into sports, it might be, uh, might be worth it. Of course, maybe you'd want to go just with uh, Sports Network, golf. <coughs> Olympics channel. Okay, teens. Okay, then some kids channels. Quite a few. Then there's AMC. The Rifleman right now. A BBC America. A kids channel. A FX, How I Met Your Mother. A FXX, Mom. FXM. Looks like old TV shows. IFC, Batman, but it's your TV series or whatever. Uh, My 27, Pop Something. Uh, can't even read what it is. Sundance TV, Andy Griffin Show. Turner Classic Movies, made for each other. Uh, True TV, USA. Uh... National Geographic, uh, National Geographic Wild, Smithsonian Institute, Science Fiction Channel, Bravo, E, Oxygen. Oh, man, my arthritis is hurting me with this. You know, I can zoom in here, by the way. There we go. Well, it doesn't zoom in on, well, if I move them, I'm not going to do it, though. Uh, we TV, BBC World News, Cheddar Business, Cheddar News, CNN, Fox News. Okay, it's morning. I bet you the there's a woman sitting there with her legs showing all the way up to her panties. Because they're required to do that, the women there on the thing. In order to get like guys like me watching. Well, that's a commercial. Shall we see if uh, anyway? There's then there's a few movies, and then they have all the old. But they do have all the old CBS shows that were on TV at CBS, and there's a ton of those. A whole bunch of different. Uh, I could show it to you, but I'm just going to end it here. I'm not. I, I just guarantee it's Fox. That. Uh, this time in the morning, and even all day long, the Fox News women are required to, uh, they can't sit behind a desk, and uh, they have to have short dresses where you can see their panties.
I'm exaggerating a little bit. Yeah, I don't think you have to see their panties. It, just if you do, it's an extra bonus. Or is that extra boner? Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Well, wait a minute. Is there a commercial ever going to end? You think they have enough commercials? Well, I, I, this is hurting me holding this camera, so I'm just going to thank you very much for watching.